This video is to help you learn how to write set notation in interval notation. A long, long time ago in elementary school, you learned how to graph a number on a number line. If you had to graph the inequality, x is greater than 5, you would put 5 on a number line. I'm not going to mark the 0 in each interval. I'm just going to put 5 up here. And you would recognize that if it did not include the number 5, we would use an open circle. And then because it points to the right or it's greater than, we would shade all numbers to the right of 5, including all numbers going towards positive infinity because that means that x can be larger and larger without bound. Um, so what I'm going to now teach you how to do is how to write an interval. Interval notation means that instead of having set notation, such as x is greater than 5, we would st say that our lowest x value is 5 and our largest value is positive infinity if it goes on forever, so it looks like a sideways 8. What you need to learn about interval notation is that if it has an open circle, we are not including the value 5. X can be 5.01, it can be 5.0001, but it cannot be 5. So therefore, we do not want to include the value of 5. To exclude the value of 5, we use a paren. Paren is singular for parentheses. So we would use left paren 5 to infinity. Infinity has no definitive endpoint as well, so we are going to exclude or use a parent always on the value of infinity and likewise negative infinity because there's no definitive endpoint for infinity. So the interval for this inequality, x is greater than 5, would be uh, 5 exclusive to infinity. So I'll put in quotation marks here how you read it, 5 exclusive to infinity. Just remember that exclusive means to exclude or to leave out 5, okay? The next one we have is x is less than negative 2. If we were to put negative 2 on our number line like so, we would also, around uh, uh, on our number line, because it is less than and not less than or equal to, we would use an open circle. Because it points to the left, for less than, we will shade to the left. So just remember, if it goes left, shade left. If it points right, shade right. So we're going to point left and notice that it's heading left forever towards negative infinity. Again, when we write our interval, just move your finger from left to right. You always write your interval from left to right. So as we move from left to right, the leftmost value is negative infinity to up to but not including negative 2. Again, because we have infinity, we are going to use a parent and list negative infinity to negative 2 excluding negative 2 because it is excluded from a possibility. x cannot equal negative 2 and be less than negative 2. So would, we would read this as negative infinity to negative 2 exclusive. Negative infinity to negative 2 exclusive. Next, you can notice that the inequality has an equal to sign underneath our less than symbol. So if we have to graph x is less than or equal to 3, we would put 3 on a number line. This time, equal, it can equal 3, so we will put a closed circle. Because it is pointing to the left, we will shade left. And again, it's heading towards negative infinity. To write our interval, again, we always read it from left to right. So negative infinity would be first and then 3. So negative infinity, comma, 3. Again, around any infinity or negative infinity, use a parent. And now what's going to be different here is because it can include the value 3, we are going to use, in this case, a right bracket a right bracket here around the 3. Think inclusive. If you look at the capital letter I, it appears to look like two 
brackets. We've got a bracket here to the left and a bracket here to the right. So that'll help you remember inclusive. So again, reading it from left to right, negative three, or excuse me, negative infinity to positive three inclusive. And that's exactly how we would read it. Negative infinity to three inclusive. Next, considering x is greater than or equal to negative four, negative four on our number line, is greater than or equal to, so because it can equal negative four, we will put a closed circle. It points to the right, so we will shade to the right. If you look at these symbols, see that greater than? It's the same symbol that's on the right end of a number line. So we're gonna shade in that direction. And then to write the interval, again, we start left and work our way right. Our lowest value is negative four. Our highest value is positive infinity. So we will, when we write our interval, write negative four to infinity. You don't have to put the positive in front. It's understood to be positive unless you see the negative. Because it can include negative four, it has a bracket. So we put a bracket facing to the right and a parent after the infinity, and this would be our interval. And we would read this as negative four inclusive to infinity. So you don't have to say inclu er, inclusive or exclusive with infinity. It's just understood that it goes on and on without bound. Now, let's consider the inequality y is greater than negative three. This time, I have a vertical number line to relate that to the y-axis. If we were to put negative 3 here on our number line, we would pretty much use the same rules. Um, greater than means we would go in the upward direction towards positive infinity. And if it was less than, we would be going in the negative direction. So negative infinity would be at the bottom of our y-axis here. So because it does not include uh, negative three, we will have an open circle at negative three. Notice that it's shading, it's pointing uh, to the right. We don't have a right or left in this case. We just have an up or down. So you need to remember that this means greater and greater would mean to go up. So we're going to shade our number line upward. And then when we write the interval, we always want to move from bottom to top. So our lowest y is a negative 3. Our highest y is infinity. Because it does not include the value of negative 3, we are going to use a parent. And again, at the end of infinity, we always use a parent as well. And we would read this as negative 3 exclusive. Remember, we are excluding negative 3 as a possible value for y. So negative 3 exclusive to infinity, and that's it. Next, y is less than or equal to 6. I'm going to first graph 6 on our number line. Because it has the equal to, it does include 6, so we will represent that by our closed circle. y is less than, so think less, lower. So we're going to shade below 6 here on our number line. Now this is where it can get a little confusing, so make sure you're paying attention. Similar to how we wrote our inequality for y is greater than negative 3, by starting to, from the bottom and working up, we're going to do the same here. It's always your lowest y to your highest y. Remember that. Lowest y to the highest y when we write an interval for y, okay? Our lowest value, as we come from the bottom, our lowest value is negative infinity, for which we'll always use a parent, up to and including 6. Because it's closed circle, because of the equal to, we will use a bracket again. And we would read this as negative infinity to 6 inclusive. So we always want to use the words inclusive or exclusive whenever we have a bracket, meaning whenever um, we see an actual number. We have to make a determination about whether um, we are going to include or exclude the number from a possibility for um, our x or our y. However, with infinities, we always use um, parents. 
So hopefully uh, this will help you better understand how to write intervals given an inequality.